Josh Raven here with the Daily Dot at DreamHack. Austin talking to Machine, host of the Analysis Desk and many other Analysis Desks before that. Uh, before we jump into the tournament, we'll talk a little bit about you yourself, kind of blowing up this year, sure. doing a lot of events. But we have seen you on the Caster Desk before as well. And I kind of want to ask you which one you prefer. I'm sure you've been asked it a few times, but what do you prefer doing? But what do you think you are better at? I mean, I get, I get asked this a lot, and I always just say like 50-50, like quite genuinely. I just like being involved in competitive like gaming and CS. So I mean, I, I think I'm probably at the moment, just because there's so many unbel like unbelievable casters, I'm probably better off in the hosting role just because it's something I'm quite competent at. I have a lot of fun doing it. I mean, I'm still, I, you know, started my career casting. I'll always be cast a caster at heart. But at the moment, just hosting the analyst desk, I get to hang out with my close, you know, close CS friends, and I get to talk about the game anyway. So I get you know best of both worlds. Okay. Well, you've done some big events in both Europe and North America, so we're going to try and give you a chance to maybe flame the North Americans here. Sounds good. Who has the better crowds? We need a definitive answer. It's been a debate for a long time. God. See, I wasn't at Columbus, and everyone says that there was a really awesome crowd in Columbus. It did look okay on the stream, but you're never going to feel it as much as being there. Austin already, like, they've packed that out already. They were making so much noise for uh, CLG Cloud9. That was awesome. Um, I don't know. I. I have to. I can't really look past Katowice just because that crowd was is always just insane. I think they just kind of live up to the hype. I think definitely they win. Okay. Well, we'll jump into the tournament then. Uh, starting off with the favourites are Luminosity coming into mm. it. Everyone thinks Luminosity is going to roll away with the tournament. Yeah. Uh, do you agree with that? It's quite a common sentiment. Yeah. But is there a chance for an upset? And which teams do you think have the best chance of that I upset? Mean, you'd be an idiot to not say Luminosity should win this, right? Defending major champions, they're not even playing against, you know, the Europeans that they beat at the major. So everything points to Luminosity winning this, but I mean, curveballs, uh, I don't know. It depends how Liquid are performing, which is actually like right now. Um, if Liquid can do what they did at the major, I'm going to keep using that as like a barometer. But yeah, I'd say, I'd say Liquid are the only real shot. And if Luminosity don't win, then they've done something terribly wrong. What do you think about Cloud9 using Slemmy? Uh, obviously, this is his first tournament Ooh, with the team. I, mean, I brought this up on the desk, actually. It's an awesome, I like this, the whole discussion actually surrounding Slemmy. Um, just the fact that North America is like hunting for talent now. Like it's got to the point where they're like, okay, all of these old guys, someone is getting arrested right now. Oh no, it's an ambulance. Okay. Okay, I'll we'll edit. <laughs> Let's go. Edit. That's, that's <laughs> so yeah, while the ambulance does its thing. Um, no, so Slemmy, well, I basically feel like he's, uh, he's, he's landed a really good gig, but also I think he's, he's going to feel an abundance of pressure, which I'm not sure he's necessarily ready for. But I like that Cloud9 always has this kind of attitude where they just hunt for, you know, a new name. Like Freakazoid, he turned up out of nowhere, really. He came back and they were like, oh, here you go. Here's an awesome contract. And they've done it again with Slemmy. Okay. And um, what do you think about the lack of European teams? You're a little bit disappointed that some of the European teams couldn't make the trip. Obviously, you can't really blame them. But do you kind of feel like the tournament might be lacking a little bit of caliber because not they're not here? actually. No, I mean, this, I think this is where CS is going to end up. Because there's just so many events right now, you're going to have these instances where there's a huge European event the next week. And so the tier two, tier one teams, it's going to get spread out. I think, you know, that's what the majors for. The majors where you get those 16 teams, all of them are there and every, everything is hunky-dory. But for these kind of events, you know, 100 grand still, no, you know, that's not chump change. And you get more and more of this feel of like, okay, this is a North American event. We have North American teams. It, yes, you know, you don't get your Fnatic and Navi every time, but that's good. I think, you know, now we're talking about teams that we don't often talk about. And I think the more that we, you know, CS grows, we're going to see a whole lot more of these Austin, these eight North American teams, whatever, the same in Europe as well. So you don't think the oversaturation, as people are calling it, is a problem? Or do you think it could become a problem yeah, in the future? It becomes a problem if they keep flying everywhere and everyone tries to do everything. I mean... I think we've seen it already with like Luminosity. Uh, they're coming straight, like literally straight out of the major. We've just won, oh my God, hype to boot camping, to Malmo and sucking. Like, dude, you, you're human beings, take a break. You know, that's, there's, there's, we, there's a weekend for a reason, right? Day of rest and all that. I think that's where it's gonna go. I think we're gonna see teams just realize that, yo, there's plenty of money. That's not a problem. Let's actually, let's treat, treat this like a job and not just rush everywhere. And I think if, as long as people don't fall for the gold rush, we're good. Okay, and let's end it. I know you gotta run soon, so we'll end it on that's a little bit of fun. You were on the desk in a hypothetical world. What is your dream analyst lineup? Who, would you, who do you love working with the most? We'll say three. That's three the usual analysts. amount. Okay. Um, I mean, I am you know, passionately in love with Moses. So he's here by my side, stroking his bald head. Uh, and then alongside him, oh God, this, I'm going to get in trouble no matter how, who I put on <laughs> yeah. this desk. Okay. I, I enjoyed working with Duncan. I'd like to do it again. And when we have to fill for like 25 minutes, I can just like unleash Thorin <laughs> and he can just do what he does. Talk about, I don't even know what he talked like anything in the world and then oh my god oh, i like yanko a lot 
Oh, yeah, fuck it. Whoop, I can't swear. <laughs> no, you can, it's fine. I can? Okay, I did. Uh, Yanko, probably throw him on the end as well. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? I know you got to go, so thank you very sure. much for the interview, and uh, have fun in the rest of the tournament. Cheers, dude.